You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nara here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, um, Vool had just walked us back. You know, we're we're kind of getting kind of getting along a little bit better, but uh, we have to be on the lookout for those other two wolves, Dran and uh, what's his name. Uh, they, they, they could possibly be up to no good, cause us a little bit of trouble. Uh, so, we're going to just have to see. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy. Let me continue for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm saying you're up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> There's word that Dran was going around asking questions. I wouldn't like you to run into him, not while he's excitable. I excitable? I subdue a chuckle, as that's one way of putting it. Yeah, those old timers rarely, if uh, rarely if ever, bother to with the plebes, unless they're out sniffing. And the last one we want, and the last one we want them to sniff around is you. True. You take care, Piglet. He bobs his head respectfully and leaves, allowing me to go about my day. His idea is quite good. A very efficient use of my time while avoiding any potential freakouts. I quickly stuff myself with my with a few nibbles, washing it down with some water and go to the bedroom. I waste on a minute and strip down the linen, down to the mattress which I find quite smelly as well. In truth, it's just a sack pu packed full with hay. But before I decide to take it apart, I look around the wardrobe for any spares. As luck would have it, I find fresh bedding behind the first door, which allows me to continue with my task. I carefully remove all the straw to one side and add the mattress to the laundry pile. Lastly, I check the pillows, which are laced at the edges. Once I undo their fastening, I find them to be filled with soft feathers. Once again, since there are spares in the wardrobe, I do, exa I do exactly the same as with the mattress. When the laundry heap is complete, I decide to fix the bedding before the draft blows and dro before, blah, before the draft blows the house full of straw and feathers. Stuffing everything back into the fresh duvets takes quite some time, but after an hour or so, the bed is back to how it should be. I feel quite proud and accomplished. I am a good warren. My boastfulness dampens a little as I gaze at the massive pile of linen to wash. It'll be a handful, but at least I won't be left at the mercy of my own thoughts. I take it all to the kitchen and fold it neatly into a basket. There's still some room left, and I'm reminded of Rannick's chest. That thing needed to be cleaned out a week ago. I walk back to the bedroom and open the latch, peering inside. Right, uh, the padded armor definitely could use a wash. There's a little loincloths dotting the bottom of the chest. As I remove them one by one, dropping onto a new pile, I sense my heart rate speed up, and I'm absolutely flushed. His smell, his musk, it's so intoxicating, and I'm immediately drawn back to that forceful kiss. His lips pushing against mine, his breath, his scent. Before I know it, I'm already inhaling deeply one of his underwear and nearly yelp out at my own perviness. What is it with all these VN having the same thing in common? <laughs> what the hell?! I'm like one of those cliched kids sniffing jocks on these in the locker room while they're not around. Ugh, now I'm also hard. I seriously need to take care of that tonight. I cannot be walking around on edge like this. I'm basically turning into a huge horn dog at this point. It's just Rannick's dirty laundry. Get a hold of yourself, Orion. I simply empty his locker onto the pile and close the chest behind. Once everything sits neatly in the basket, I grab my bar of soap and drape one of Rannick's spare cloaks right across my arm. I'm leaving the most fragrant one for my for my comfort blankie, should the nights grow too lonely to face on my own. One second. The issue! The issue! Oh, goodness. Ow! <laughs> Making sure I've got everything, I step outside and head for the, and head for the spring. Yeah, ow, my face. <laughs> The day enters its late afternoon hours, judging by the low-hanging sun in the western sky. I've managed to wash out the loincloths along with the pillowcases within the padded armor without an issue, but the linens are quite stubborn. And not to mention when soaked, they get incredibly heavy, and my sore arms hurt more, than, hurt more than I would like. It's been at least a few hours since I came here, and god do I miss a proper washing machine. Or a laundrette. <laughs> laundrette! My kingdom for a laundrette! I chuckle, shaking my head. When he said I'd find you here, I thought he was joking. Jesus Christ! I yelp out in panic, despite recognizing her voice. Who? <laughs> Never mind. I mumble, rushing over, the, rushing after the linen I drop before it gets washed away. You scared the crap out of me. You move like a ghost. I finally exhale, trying to calm my startled heart. I take great pride in that. Not funny. No, not as much as finding you here again. I thought he was joking. 
I mean, he did suggest it as a joke, but might as well do some proper work while I'm alone and idle. I shrug, kneeling back at my spot and proceeding to soap up the cloth. That's the spirit. She nods in approval and kneels beside me. What were you tr what were you saying back then? Huh? Oh, it, it was just a joke. I wave my hand at her. In your native tongue? Wait, you didn't understand it? Not a language I've ever heard. The co that comment throws me off, but then I just flush my brows. I suppose a laundrette is quite an obscure word. What does it mean? Oh boy, here comes the ticket situation again. Um, it's a place filled with washing machines. Washing machines? Maybe you are mad. She rolls her eyes and laughs mockingly. What? Why? Once I see the look on her muzzle, I realize they're most likely unfamiliar with the idea of home appliances. This is all you need for washing. She points to her arms and reaches out for one end of the linen. Allow me to lend you a paw. She takes hold of the cloth and moves it over onto one of the smooth stones. She reaches for the soap and I pass it to her, watching as she glides it across the now straightened surface. See? This makes it easier, and you get the soap into the fabric more evenly. Huh. Th thanks. I mumble in gratitude, trying to mimic her method. She helps out by taking care of the remaining bedding, and we work for a while in silence, passing the soap back and forth. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, here we go. That should be all, no? Vrissa asks as I rinse the last the last of the last cloth of soapy scum. Yeah, I just need to ring just need to ring those. Good. Good I good thing I'm here then, huh? It would definitely take more time, that's for sure. We grab each we each grab one end of the linen and twist it to the opposite direction, squeezing the water out from between the fibers. Once it's done, she helps me fold everything neatly into the basket. Your markings washed off a little. I state, seeing her tattoo lose its sharpness. It's alright, I have to redo them every now and then. What do they mean, anyway? You can't read them? Uh, no. She gives me a somewhat confused gaze, but her voice carries a hint of a jab at our exchange from a few mom moments ago. Huh, curious. I thought you said you read some books. I assumed they were woven, but they might have been Tiggery. I guess. I shrug and pick up the laundry, ready to depart. This language thing is really getting more and more bizarre. The basket got quite heavy on the count of the remaining moisture held by the cloth, and I struggle a little. Versa simply grabs the other end of it and helps to alleviate the burden. I smiled at her in gratitude, and she simply winks in return. So, what are your markings, anyway? They're a prayer of protection, warding off evil spirits. You believe in those? I believe in the ancestors, Orion. She chuckles. There are evil people out there. Some of them are even amongst us. Why would I not believe in evil spirits? That's a good question, I concede with a smile. If I had ancestors like Aldris or Dran to look forward to, I'd also ward against them. When we arrive at the cottage, I pop the basket and fetch the clothesline. Rissa helps me string it between the trees and some hooked nails protruding from the side of the house. We created three racks this way, more than enough to dry what we have in the basket. <clears throat> Before I manage to voice my concern about the wind blowing some of the lighter items away, she showcases me a small bowl filled with wooden laundry pegs. She retrieved it from underneath one of the bushes nestled against one of our support trees. Looking at it now, I can see the bruises left by previous washing ups. I guess she helped Rannick before, if she knows where those are. Where those were. Uh, not the first time doing this, I assume. If you mean laundry in general, of course not. If you mean doing it for Rannick, you clearly don't know me well enough. She chuckles, helping me straighten one of the duvets. But I did often watch Rannick do his routine. Why? There's nothing more satisfying to watch a male fail the simplest of domestic tasks. Is Rennick that helpless? Was it first? He learns fast, though. I smile, reaching out for the remaining loincloths. Once everything is hung and secured, I pick up the basket and offer her to come inside. Want something to drink? We re we've restocked Rennick's supply. After closing the doors behind her, I offer closing the doors behind her. So I've heard. Anything interesting happen? Not particularly. The brewery smelled nice at first, but it quickly got a bit overwhelming. Yeah. She chuckles. Good thing Tibbot lives in the outskirts. But even despite that, the wind sometimes carries the stench over to my place. Uh, about that drink, then? I shake two mugs, which I just rinsed in the bowl. Aren't you just sweet? I'd love to, but I can't. Versa looks troubled towards the window. Andres and Dran are in town. I've heard. But don't they live here anyway? Not in the village, no. She shakes her head. They live in the woods nearby. Closest they ever showed themselves is the villa. 
And you've seen how far away that is. Yeah, a bit of a trek. So as you can see, having a... Hell, so you can see how having them walk around the village and poke every wolf they find is a bit troubling. You think they're after me? She can't help but snort in somewhat undignified fashion. Not everything is about you, Kaylin. <laughs> she teases and I smile. However, we wouldn't want them to run into you, or worse yet, find out that I'm sipping drinks here. True. So, i better get going. I also want to check in on Vool. I have a feeling they might be questioning him later. I'd rather avoid bloodshed. She showed her slightly, and I laugh. I'm not worried for Vool. Neither am I, she, re she replies in a quite serious tone. I just don't want this to get ugly. I know how easy it is to set him off. Y yeah. I nod hastily, my levity now completely gone. That Dran guy is literally asking for someone to rip out his throat. Seeing Vithyr and Chief being ready to throw down, edging Vool in the same fashion would be suicidal. I mean, not a great loss as far as I can see, but I don't think any harm to those old farts would come without consequence. I'm sure he already said that, but stay put. Mm-hmm. I nod in I nod acknowledgement. As much as I don't like it, Cora will bring you some food in the evening. It'll be easier that way with them around. She is nice, but don't mess with her. She's smarter than she looks. She states firmly, opening the door. Oh, I've noticed that. Only a fool would dismiss her. <laughs> Perhaps. There's yet hope for your sex. I hear her melodic laugh as the doors close. With her gone, I pull my dandelion from the pen and look at it closely. It unfolded beautifully and is almost as radiant as the day Rannick left it. I'm immediately relieved and hastily put it back into the cup. It really just needed some sun, just as I needed some fresh air. I find that getting work done feels very rewarding and think about celebrating it with ale. However, I quickly find that the barrel is not tapped, and I have no idea how to get how to get to it. So I simply sit back and enjoy my hard-earned meal properly, nibbling on Vool's meats and cheeses. Mmm, <laughs> nibbling on Vool's meats, huh? <laughs> I spent the remainder of the day washing up the dirty dishes and cleaning up the house some more. There wasn't much work left, so I had a strong, dreary chunk when all I could do was worry about the elders. If they really show their faces rarely, why now? Does it have anything to do with Rannick or me? I know Varissa said not everything revolves around me, however, the Chief and Vithyr both believe that I might be the unknown to tip the scales. In all fairness, I wouldn't like to be on the scales to begin with, but such is life. How crazy things got since I woke up. That little amnesiac bundle of anxiety, angst, and despair. My memory didn't get any better, but boy, did shit get complicated fast. I wouldn't mind trading places with that little wimp, however. I'd have to relive the, this whole thing all over again. I grimaced, rubbing my fake dressing. In truth, between each wash-up, I saw the scar fade further and further away until it's just barely visible. Uh, vi until it's just a barely visible scrape. Now, I cast my troubled gaze at the barrel. Fuck! I could really use that ale. I am not going to drink moonshine on my own. That's just sad, and most likely would give the voices something to bitch about. I've been doing fine so far, despite running out of errands. I'm not going to sabotage myself like that. And should they become more persistent, I might secretly copy Varissa's markings and see if that will help. Ooh, you don't like that idea, do you? I can sense it. Both of us can play this game. It would be an interesting experiment, that's for sure. And it could provide me with some more proof. I some more proof should I have the should I have to confront them about my slight unhingement. A knock stirs me to hear, and now I'm reminded of my evening food delivery. I straighten up my dress and approach the doors, opening them with a polite smile. Hello, girly. Just as expected, Cor enters the house with a deliciously aromatic pie in her paws. Damn, my mouth waters at the smell of what I assume is meat and rich gravy. Hello, pet. How are you holding up? Her usually, her usually melodic voice sounds rather aggravated. Sorry about running so late. I was held up by an interrogation. She continues to talk as if I was one of them until she simply blinked in self-realization. Oh, God, I almost choked on something. <clears throat> oh, I know. Again, as her custom by now, she pantomimes a shaky elderly person with a walking stick and then proceeds to yap with her hands. I can't, I can't contain a chuckle. She spots on with those. She, she spots, she spot on with those. She'd be a freaking Perot at charades. You get it. I bet you've had your own share. You have no idea, sister. Without asking in of her own accord, she fetches a plate and a knife, starting to cut into the pie. They've been asking all sorts of stupid questions, like, did I notice anything odd about Rannick? Or have I seen any unusual spending spending on his part, as if it was any of my damn business? What's odd is that fat lump of flesh in a cape ta tailing Aldris like her, like her damn shadow. Are they even a thing? Ew! 
She sounds quite rattled, clearly offended by the whole situation, and seems more like venting rather than talking to me. Not gonna lie, I don't feel happy about them conducting some sort of inquest. <clears throat> I was right, they're trying to find dirt on my wolf. Anyway, I know Rannick most likely did buy some things for you. I mean, who wouldn't? She shrugs. Not all of us can watch wards shamble about in tatters, half starved to death. Bolly cheek. She pauses her task, barely containing a growl. It says damn money. If he were to drape you in pure gold, that would be within his right. She even asked me about the pie. If all the food is accounted for, the nerve. Cora resumes her task and places a sizable slice onto my plate. It's my food. I paid for it. What business is it of hers? Ooh, I told that vile woman that if I'd like, that if I like, that if I like, I'll stuff you full of pheasants and grouse. She's nearly shaking, and I place a hand on her shoulders. I'm sorry. I'm babbling. I, I know you can't understand, but just I had to get this off my chest. Her saddened gaze trails to the general direction of the village. I wouldn't be able to deal with the feast otherwise. Not with them present, and with Rannick gone. She frowns, looking at me with genuine worry. I can wholeheartedly understand that sentiment. Perhaps they didn't handle them well, but they get so nosy. And they clearly were trying to find some hook to use against Rannick. I feel quite taken by her remorseful I feel quite taken by her remorseful sigh and tap her shoulder encouragingly. If there's a wolf with a dam around here, it's definitely him. No argument from me. I better get going, otherwise they take my tardiness as an excuse to barge in here. God forbid. I hope you'll enjoy it, sweetie. She mutters, approaching the door. It's beef with plums and apricots. Sounds even more delightful than it smells. See you later, pet. Her customary farewell sounds very downtrodden, and I wave at her with genuine worry. Damn. Things are much more serious than I expected. Despite the extremely appealing meal, my appetite is quite gone. So the elders were interviewing everyone. Perhaps wearing the dress wasn't a good idea after all. But what else was I supposed to do? Go dressed up as a go dressed up as Mowgli? That or a sexy hobbit. <laughs> As the hours go by, my tortured thoughts begin begin going in circles, and I simply dig into the pie before it grows completely cold. The meal lifts my spirits somewhat, as I enjoy the deliciously hearty gravy and succulent meat, accompanied by some juicy prunes. But at the end of the day, it's just that. A meal. It won't solve any of the problems we face. The amount of work done today, along with the full belly, quickly send me into a daze, and I decide to wash up and head to bed. I leave the fire burning, as well as take Rannick's scented cloak to give myself some comfort while I drift off into hopefully undisturbed sleep. Once I'm snuggled up comfortably in bed, I simply close my eyes and take a deep and take. I simply close my eyes and take deep inhales from my blankie. The scent of my wolf sends a pleasant chill down my spine, and I reminisce of the few times we shared this bed. I miss him terribly, but the longer I linger on him, the more and more my mind drifts to that kiss. I can almost feel his steamy breath against my skin, his hard groin pressing against mine as his tongue explores my mouth in a passionate kiss. My breath speeds up and my loins come to life. It's hard to keep my mind straight when it comes to that wolf. I'm pretty pent up. I haven't done anything naughty since I woke up, and since then I've been teased to hell, edged and left hanging. Uh, wondering if I should go on or not. Ay, 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 ay. Not to mention that intoxicating kiss. Ugh! Uh. Uh. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this part for the next video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this video's gotta go up today. I don't know if I'm gonna have to do any editing, so I'm just gonna be very... I'm just gonna be very, very, um... Careful about this part, so... Alright. Uh, I'm gonna... Pause it right here in the next video. I'll have, I'll have plenty of time to edit out any uh, naughty stuff. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribing, that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can, or a tip, as it's always known as. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!